Ovarian cancer clinical presentation, investigation and management will be discussed today in the form of a clinical scenario. Common presenting clinical features of patient with ovarian cancer include bloating, pelvic or abdominal pain, changes in appetite and weight, frequent urination, fatigue, backache, dyspareunia, constipation, irregular menstruation and mass abdomen. Let us discuss a case scenario. 60 years old postmenopausal lady who is menopausal for 10 years presented with abdominal bloating and feeling of mass in the lower abdomen. In such case, first of all, take detailed history from the patient. In the demographic profile, ask about name, age, marital status, duration of marriage, education, occupation, parity, last menstrual period, and menopausal status. Ask details about the mass abdomen, ask about its onset, duration, progression and exact site. Certain questions regarding virilizing symptoms are needed to be asked in order to assess the nature of the mass. Like we have to ask about hirsutism, acne, male pattern baldness and deepening of voice. Ask about the pressure symptoms like increased urinary frequency, the bowel symptoms, bloating, vomiting and varicose veins. Keep in your mind the differential diagnosis of mass abdomen. The history of heavy menstrual bleeding in such patient increase the possibility of fibroid uterus, adenomyosis, endometrial cancer and or endometrioma. If the patient gives history of weight loss, loss of appetite, feeling of lumps anywhere in the body, then think about the possibility of ovarian cyst or cancer or the endometrial cancer. The vaginal discharge may or not be present in patients with tubo ovarian mass, especially due to PID. If patient gives history of dysuria, think about fibroid uterus or tubo ovarian mass. If that tuber ovarian mass is tuberculous in nature, patient may give history of chronic cough or the night sweats. Dysmenorrhea may be present in adenomyosis, endometrioma and tuber ovarian mass. History of fever is also there in case of the tuber ovarian mass, especially due to PID. Pain lower abdomen increase the possibility of bowel mass, mesenteric cyst or retroperitoneal cyst or appendicitis if it is present in the right iliac fossa. Change in the bowel frequency occurs in bowel mass or retroperitoneal cyst and in these two cases patient may also present with loss of appetite or feeling of lump anywhere in the body. The change in urinary frequency is in urinary retention. Patient with appendicitis may present with vomiting as well. Now risk ass assessment is also very important. The factors which increase the possibility of ovarian cancer include uh, ovulation induction or the assisted reproductive techniques. The other risk factors include the use of IOCD, use of talcum powder, cigarette smoking, early menarche, late menopause, nulli parity or the family history of ovarian cancer. The factors which decrease the risk of ovarian cancer include multiparity, OCPs, tubal ligation, salpingectomy, hysterectomy, pregnancy or the breastfeeding. The other questions which must be asked while taking history include the obstetric history, any antenatal, intrapartum and postnatal complications previously and gynecological history including cervical screening, contraception, the medical and surgical history, personal history of the smoking and drug abuse and also the personal history of the cancer, the family history of any cancer, the history of uh, use of any drug or the drug allergy. In the end, ask what investigations have been done so far and what management has been done so far. After history, we examine the patient. First of all, general physical examination including the vitals. Then the systemic examination including the breast and the chest examination is done. In the per abdominal examination, first do inspection for any scar marks or visible pulsation. Do appropriate palpation in order to evaluate the mass abdomen if any mass is found then check different things like check the surface of it check the site check the size of it the mobility the margins the consistency of it the temperature its tenderness and 
the nature of the overlying skin and check whether the lower limit is reachable or not. Also examine the groin lymph nodes. For ascites, do percussion and check the shifting dullness as well. The fluid thrill is done in case of the gross ascites. Then the local examination is done. The biomanual examination is performed in order to check the uterine size, position, mobility, tenderness. The perspeculum examination for the health of the vagina and cervix and we look for any sort of the discharge and do the pap smear. In the end, the pararectal examination is performed to assess the involvement of the rectum. After examination, we do appropriate investigations of the patient. It starts from baseline investigations first of all. After baseline examination, we do the transvaginal scan in order to assess the uterine size, position, mobility and tenderness and any adnexal pathology and we try to find out if, there, if any cyst is found in there or not. If the cyst is found, then we check whether it is unilateral or bilateral, unilocular or bilocular any solid components present, any papillary projections are present or not, and whether there are metastases to any other part of the body, and whether ascites is present or not. If the feature of complex cysts are found on ultrasound, we do the tumor markers. Like in this lady who is postmenopausal, we will do the CA125 and we will check the RM, uh, RMI score of this patient and if the RMI score is high means more than 200 then we will do the CT scan or MRI in order to do the proper staging of the ovarian cancer. This algorithm is from RCOG guideline about ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women. So in postmenopausal women, if the cystic lesion is 1 cm or more, we check the uh, CA125 and the cal we, then we calculate the RMI. If RMI is less than 200, there is low risk of malignancy. If she is fulfilling this, this criteria and she is in the low risk, then we go for the conservative management. But if she is fulfilling this criteria, she is in high risk group. In case when RMI is more than 200, there is a high risk of malignancy and in that case, we do CT scan abdominal pelvis and refer the patient to gynecological oncologist and we do the MDT review. As I told before, in case of less than 200 RMI and in, in the low risk category, we do conservative management in which we do repeat assessment in four to six months time if that results we discharge the patient in case of persistence we individualize the treatment after discussion with the woman in case of the change in feature we consider interventions in case of the high risk group we consider salpingo ophorectomy usually bilateral in patients with RMI of more than 200, in MDT review, if there is high likelihood of ovarian malignancy, we do laparotomy and full uh, staging procedure by trained gynecological oncologist. But if there is low likelihood of ovarian malignancy, we do laparotomy, pelvic clearance, TH plus VSO plus omentectomy plus peritoneal cytology by suitably trained gynecologist is performed. Once the diagnosis of cancer is confirmed, we debrief the patient regarding the diagnosis, its implication and the plan of management. Involve multidisciplinary team in the management of this patient, including the gynecologist, the oncologist, the anesthetist, the histopathologist and the radiologist. The specific management of ovarian cancer depend upon the stage of the ovarian cancer, the age of the patient, the fertility intention and associated comorbidities. The stage-wise management of ovarian cancer is explained in this chart and for the full video, you can click on the i button in the top right corner of this video. For further management, admit the patient, prepare according to WHO surgical safety checklist treat the acute complications like if the patient presents with low HB or any other problem, sort that out first. After discussion with a multidisciplinary team of the doctor, when the staging laparotomy is advised for this patient, perform it under 
aseptic measure and by using appropriate technique. Once the procedure is performed, provide appropriate post-operative care to the patient and call her for follow-up. As for the follow-up is concerned, there are no evidence-based guidelines regarding the appropriate follow-up schedule. During the first year following treatment, patients are seen every three months with a gradual increase in interval to every four to six months after two years and then annually after fifth year. This follow-up is in FIGO 2021 ovarian cancer guideline. At each follow-up, the patient should have her history retaken, including any change in the family history of cancers. If there is any query in your mind, feel free to write in the comment section. Subscribe on Ops and Gyne and follow our Facebook page as well.